Thank you. I'd like to thank you for the invitation. It's hard enough to debate Jack West in a good day, but he gave a case that is the best case scenario. And so I think I'll try to go over some of these things. And this is sort of a more typical case. A 66-year-old man presents with some cough, some dyspnea. CT scan reveals normal size uh, right hilar mass and normal size lymph nodes. A PET scan is done, which doesn't reveal any extra thoracic disease, no mediastinal disease. MRI is a negative for brain metastasis, biopsies and adenocarcinoma. Uh, patient is referred to a thoracic surgeon uh, who uh, does an operation because that's what they do. He undergoes a right pneumonectomy um, without any mediastinal staging. At the time of a uh, pathology report, we find out that the patient has microscopic involvement of station 7 and 4R. I think that this is important because our preoperative staging is not, with radiological imaging, is not perfect. The patient does go, has a postoperative complication of atrial fibrillation requiring anticoagulation. At this point, medical oncology gets involved. I think when we have a discussion about, excuse me, I think when we have a discussion about who undergoes resection of stage 3A, I think they can be categorized in three categories. One is the patient who has unsuspected N2 disease where everyone does everything right, PET scans done, invasive mediastinal staging is done, and they're incidentally found to have N2 involvement at the time of resection. I think the more familiar scenarios to us in medical oncology are the latter two, the ignored N2, where the patient has a suspicious involvement of N2 disease on this CAT scan or PET scan is taken to surgery at that time, or possibly the underappreciated N2 disease where the patient has a central lesion or N1 nodal enlargement and does not undergo invasive uh, mediastinal staging. I characterize the N2 disease as looked but didn't care. I disguise the underappreciated N2 disease as don't look, don't tell. And all these things lead us to these number of patients who are not going to benefit from surgery are getting taken to the operating room because of inadequate mediastinal staging. This is a uh, study by Andre that uh, Jack presented. This was 702 patients. And they divided patients into clinical N2 disease, which is where it's detected on preoperative and confirmed on mediastinoscopy, or minimal, which is no preoperative detection, and single versus multiple uh, station nodal involvement. They then divided them into four categories, the min minimal single N2 station, clinical single station, minimal multi-station, and clinical multi-station. I point you to the minimal single station N2. That's 244 out of these 702 patients. So clearly a minority of the patients have a single uh, station N2 node, and this is sort of our best case scenario. And as Jack has shown you, the single station N2 nodes do very well. However, the majority of our patients have either clinical N2 involvement or multi-station N2 involvement, and they do very poorly with the surgery. And I think, what is the risk of taking some patient to surgery? And I think if you look at the incomplete resection rate, it's a uh, partial resection rate on this trial was 23%. If you look at the clinical N2 versus the minimal N2, 29% of the patients in the clinical N2 node underwent an incomplete resection. In the middle, minimal multi-station N2 disease versus the minimal single station disease, in the multi-station, 23% underwent an uh, incomplete resection. I think that this faces us challenges for us after the operation, how to treat these patients. In many ways, these patients have undergone a thoracotomy for what amounts to a big biopsy. The question then becomes, do we have an alternative therapy? I think if we we're practicing in the Middle Ages and we only had surgery, that would be, you know, surgery would be the best option for these patients. But we do. Chemoradiation has been shown to be effective in these patients. This is the intergroup trial, which uh, Jack showed you the schema. It then took patients who are surgically resectable to either to chemoradiation therapy or chemoradiation therapy followed by surgical resection. I'll just point out a uh, couple points. Uh, one, the overall survival, which was the primary endpoint, was negative. This is a negative trial. Um, the PFS was slightly better um, in the chemoradiation followed by surgery versus the chemoradiation. However, I don't think anyone says at the wake, uh, well, thank God he didn't progress sooner. I think the other issue is on the treatment-related deaths, there were 8% in the chemoradiation followed by surgery versus 2%. The mortality for the patients undergoing a right pneumonectomy was 25%. I think also no patients died during the chemoradiation portion of this uh, trial. Chemotherapy and radiation followed by surgery doesn't really offer any benefits over chemoradiation according to this trial. 
Then the question comes up, well, maybe preoperative chemotherapy followed by surgery would be better than uh, chemo radiation. And this was a trial that was presented at ASCO this year. RMA was carboplatinum and pacotaxol for three cycles, followed by surgery, followed by postoperative uh, radiation therapy. RMB was chemotherapy with carboplatinum taxol, followed by radiation therapy. The RMB would, I think, be considered an inferior therapy. Most of us use concurrent chemoradiotherapy in the appropriate patient. And what this trial really showed is that there was really no benefit to the approach of chemotherapy followed by surgery, followed by postoperative radiation therapy over what I would consider an antiquated chemoradiation uh, paradigm. So let's look at our patient case. The patient does experience post thoracotomy pain, but which approximately 5 to 15 percent of patients will do. Develops a hospital acquired pneumonia. And then he gets four cycles of cisplatinum uh, chemotherapy. Then he does get radiation therapy, so he winds up getting trimodality therapy in this situation as well. I think this illustrates a couple of things, this case and other issues. There's one, that there is a real morbidity to taking these patients to surgery, and so you really should be certain that there is a benefit to taking a patient to surgery. And particularly, there's also a mortality of around 5% uh, on most of the national registries. There can be some debates. It might be lower or higher at your center, depending on um, they always say that the, all the surgeons say, oh, that doesn't happen in my, my patients. That's, that's someone else's patients that have that 5% mortality. I think it's pretty clear that patients with a clinical or multi and 2 disease have a poor prognosis, and they're really unlikely to benefit from a surgical resection, and chemo radiation therapy should be the standard in these patients. Other issues is it really remains difficult to determine which patients with stage 3 disease are going to benefit from resection at this point. There's been a lot of talk about nodal clearance. If you can predict which patients are going to clear your nodes with chemo radiation therapy and which ones are not, you're a much better doctor than I am because I think um, that's a, impossible to predict going in, so you don't know who's going to benefit from this approach. And I also think that it's important that chemo radiation therapy is equally efficacious with less mort treatment related mortality and I would argue less morbidity for the patient. Terrific, Dom. Thank you so much. Um, can we have the case back?